Hello mate, welcome back. In this video we're going to do a couple of things which are going to make creating HD morphs for your characters possible and it's also going to speed up your character loading times. Before I get started, thank you to everybody for subscribing and hitting that notification icon, that really helps me out. And of course an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons, your names will be running across the bottom of the screen at the end of the video. So let's jump into this then. So the first problem that I encountered that caused me to go down this avenue was that as you can see, my character for the mum in my game is a little bit too aged and there's this weird wrinkle underneath her chin and some of the age lines around her head I just wasn't happy with. The problem is they are HD morphs which are part of the character files which I've used to create this character. So there's no way to remove them with Daz Studio in its current uh, way of working because Daz Productions have disabled the ability to create or edit HD morphs unless you're a published artist. Boohoo, I know what you're thinking. Well, there is a workaround and not only does this allow us to create HD morphs, but it also allows us to create our own character preset file which doesn't reference any other files, which means as long as you've got the DUF file and the textures, it will load pretty quickly rather than having to look for references. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to make sure that we create an HD version of this character. So we're going to go into our character preferences in the parameters and we're going to look at mess resolution. Now, the first thing you can see is that we've got subdivision level two and render subdivision level three. We're going to go ahead and crank that up as high as we can so that we're working on the highest resolution mesh that we possibly can. Now, word of warning, if you have a computer that doesn't have much power, then you may struggle with this simply because there is now a lot of geometry here that we're going to be working with. So make sure you save your new character presets as a different file name. Don't overwrite your old characters because you want to be able to revert back to using the old ones if this doesn't work for you. So now that we've created this, we're going to go ahead and we're going to open this up and make sure that we don't have eyelashes or eyebrows or any items of clothing, no render presets, no environment presets, nothing. The only thing we want in our scene is the very base mesh for our character. Then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go to file, export, we're going to just create our file here. So I'm just going to go mum underscore obj. And then we're going to come up with a dialog box. We are going to be importing this straight back into Das Studio. So leave this as Das Studio. One unit equals one centimeter. Make sure your scale is at 100%. Write UV coordinates. Make sure that that is ticked. Otherwise, the next step's not going to work. But pretty much you just want to leave all of this stuff as is and hit accept. One other thing that I forgot to mention is you have to make sure that your character is in its default A pose. If you're doing this with a Genesis 3 character then obviously it will be a T pose but make sure that it stays in its default pose. Don't move anything. So now we've exported that file we should have a nice FBX file which we're going to import back in. So we're going to go to file import and we're going to come up with our obj file there and we're just going to hit accept and lo and behold we should now see that another character appears in the scene called mum underscore obj that's great so now we're just going to slide our mum mesh across just to check that everything's there and as you can see it very much is and if we were to change this to wire shaded you can see that we have a really complex mesh with lots of funky stuff going on there so we're going to go back to smooth shaded can't use texture shaded because that includes nipples so what we need to do now is we need to apply all of the surfaces from our original character to our new character so what we're going to do is in our surfaces tab here I'm going to expand this down and I'm going to do the same thing for our new object and as you'll notice the the uh, UV surface maps have been saved into our new object so this makes the next step really easy what we're going to do is we're going to select our original file in surfaces. We're going to select arms. It's going to be the first one. We're going to hit copy selected surfaces. Then we're going to go back, select arms, and we're going to go paste to selected surfaces. And as you can see, the glossiness of that surface has automatically changed 
and we're just going to do that for every single surface copy the cornea and paste to the cornea make sure you select the surfaces and don't just right click on them select ears copy selected surfaces and we're going to hit ears in here and paste to selected surfaces once we've done that we'll move on to the next stage so if you go through and do all of that now i'll see you in a sec now that we've copied all of the surfaces across we should have now visible on the screen two identical models one of them is a genesis 8 figure one of them is a standard obj so now we're going to go to our genesis 8 female and in the parameters tab we're going to go back to our x translate and change that to zero so that they occupy the same space and time there we go like that so now what we're going to do is we're going to transfer the rigging across from one character to our new character and we're going to do that by clicking on this icon here it may not be here on your screen but you're basically looking for the transfer utility dialog you're going to open that up and in the source we're going to select scene item and the character that we're originating our original genesis 8 female character and then in the target we're going to select our new character in projection template we just select full body it's fine you can open up all of this kind of thing first i'm just going to choose closest vertex first but you don't necessarily have to uh, basically you want to unselect fit source figure parent to source figure you're going to hit accept and then it's going to do a bit of thinking now that that's done what we should now have is another character so it's basically turned this obj into a character we're not quite finished another thing that we need to do is in our obj file we're going to need to save this as a figure asset one other thing we need to do is we need to double check on this we need to click on this here and we need to go to edit figure scene identification and what we're looking for in our new dialog box that's appeared is we want to see genesis 8 female in there which we're going to control and see and then we can see that this is actor character compatibility basis genesis 8 female we can hit cancel there we're going to click on this one we're going to go to edit figure and we're going to go to scene identification here and what you can see is that this is just wrong so we're going to select that like that and we're going to paste genesis 8 female into there compatibility base we're going to have to change that so that it says uh, genesis 8 female but we can't do that just yet we're going to hit accept like that and then that's just created the correct information the correct metadata for that file what we want to do now is we're just going to hide the original object and we're going to save this we're going to go to file and we're going to go to save as support asset figure prop assets like that and then it's going to come up with a whole bunch here so what i'm going to call this is mum underscore high res because that's what it is and then a whole bunch of other stuff's going to come up here so i'm going to change this to don't, don't click on that arrow <laughs> i'm going to change that to thundor and then i'm going to change this to thundor characters just so i don't lose base of it and then it's just going to be called mum like that now you can see we've got a couple of options here we can set our character category if we want to so we can set this to be a default figure people female and then that just makes sure that it appears in the correct window in our smart content set compatibility base we're going to just select this and then we're going to come up with a whole dialogue option here i've already been playing around with this so you can see that i've got genesis 8 female selected we're going to hit accept like that and then that will do it and then we just hit accept and it's going to save it now that we've done that if we go back into our edit figure scene identification you can see now that compatibility base has indeed been updated to say genesis 8 female in there and you can see that in our scene id genesis 8 female has now been selected what that essentially means is that when we try and put clothing on this character it will work now realistically that's the job done you could now go ahead and pose this character you can do whatever you want but obviously the whole point of this is to be able to create hd morph so what we need to do now is we need to stick this over into zbrush to make sure that we can actually do that so that's what we're going to do we've got our character selected and we're going to hit our zbrush we're going to just go to export at current resolution we don't need to export with deformations because there are none except like that 
Now we're in ZBrush, we've closed down our light box and all that other jazz. You can see Mum OBJ is our tool, so we're going to drag it out and then we're going to click on edit. Now we can hit frame up, going to click on this icon here, which makes her face the character and then frame up again. Now we can zoom in on the face. So what we're going to do is just do that. Annoying zoom straight into the boobs. I'm going to say that that's a Freudian slip by our colleagues at um, ZBrush, but um, you know, not the best. There are, there are keyboard shortcuts to do this. I'm just using the buttons for the sake of demonstration. Now, as you can see, without a texture on, this character looks quite haggard, which is not really what we're going for. This is kind of, uh, you know, a young, attractive mum who doesn't necessarily need all these wrinkles around. So we're just going to move it up so that we can get this whole bit under the chin. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag my draw size right down because we're only going to be tackling a few bits and pieces at once. I'm also going to hit X which is going to turn on symmetry. Symmetry? What the hell kind of word is that? Symmetry. So now you can see the little dots. So whatever I do on one side of the face is going to be mirrored on the other. I also want to hold down my shift key and you'll see that Z intensity turns straight up to 100. So we're going to drop that down to about, I'm going to say like 12 to 15%. And then when we smooth over these wrinkles, you'll notice that it doesn't do it all in one hit. So that gives us more of a fighting chance of just making this look a little bit smoother. We really want to remove this whole wrinkle from under the chin because it just makes the character look really jowly and that's not what we want. You know, she's she's sort of, you know, middle-aged-ish. We don't need too much. We want some lines, but we don't need like the crazy level of wrinkling that we've, we've got in this character. So we're just fixing that. And then we're going to move up and we're going to focus on the eyes as well because the eye wrinkle situation is kind of mad as well. We're not removing them completely, we're just smoothing them out slightly. It's taking a couple of years off this lady. If only it were this easy in real life, eh girls? Now we can drag our draw size down a little bit more. Just smooth out these wrinkles, remembering that you're holding the shift key down. If you're using a clay brush or something and you just click indiscriminately you're going to be adding some really weird wrinkles to your character's face we're just we're trying to remove them we're trying to do the exact opposite smooth out that little bit on top of the cheek there just smoothing it out just trying to get rid of some of that laughter line there we need to go bigger for the bigger wrinkles so be it and just crank it up a little bit and we need to zoom out a little bit. We can do that as well. Remembering you're hitting the shift key. I'm not a big fan of forehead lines. Oh, see what happens when you accidentally don't control Z. Then, you, then you're good to go. So yeah, just remember you're smoothing out a little bit. You're not going too mad. Otherwise, there's no point. But the purpose of this is so that you can see what that we can now create HD morphs for our character because our character itself, our base resolution mesh is HD so this is a workaround folks it's not the perfect way of doing it but it's a workaround so now if we go frame up we can see that we've kind of done a good job of making the necessary adjustments there and if we can frame up we can zoom in again if we want to double check on some things because you can see it from different lights and this is another good opportunity if you were in so inclined you could also make adjustments to perhaps the nipples just add a little bit more depth to them or whatever Whatever you want to do, this is the way, this is the time and the place to do it. You can now, to your heart's content, create HD morphs. And I was thinking that looks better. It certainly looks a lot better. She looks younger. I might smooth out some of that texture around the inside of there. Yeah, she's got old lady lines underneath the uh, ear there, which we don't really need just to smooth those out a little bit as well cool so now that's done all we have to do is hit the go z button and it'll bring us into daz studio now if you wanted to create a morph this is where you'd give it a name and because this is the character that i want to adjust i'm just going to go to update base mesh and then it will update the geometry of the mesh so we can hit accept and lo and behold you'll see the changes have been made now if we zoom in close to the face you can see that that jowly look under there is a lot better and overall things look a lot tidier. Now we can 
also double check that if we were to go into, into NVIDIA IRA preview mode, while I don't have her boobs on the screen, we can have a look and see how that actually looks. And we can just see, as you can see, face looks a lot smoother now, a lot less jowly. There's still a little bit of wrinkling around the eyes there. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the outcome. And as you can see, we now have a character with everything we need. She's in HD, so we can create HD morphs. She's going to load a lot quicker because it's not referencing a load of other files. We can now save this as a character preset. Now we can resave the base mesh, whatever we want to do. But that's all there is to it, guys. Nice and simple. Thanks for watching that. I hope you found it useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And I will see you in the next episode. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.